Welcome to today's webinar, Keep Clients Coming Back, Easy Retention Strategies That Work. I'd like to introduce you to Kristen Coverly. She is the ASCP Manager of Professional Development. Not only is she a fantastic massage therapist, she is also very knowledgeable in the field of marketing and um, business strategies. She has done a number of in-person workshops for our sister association, Associated Body Work and Massage Professionals, and been with the company for a very, very long time. Kristen is dedicated to creating resources to support us as skincare professionals, and she is often found in ASCP Skin Deep magazine. She writes articles for us, and um, by blending her background in both business edu education and the wellness industry, she offers our members unique strategies and tips to help you succeed. It is my pleasure to introduce Kristen, who is um, not only an awesome coworker, but a good pal of mine to the floor. Kristen, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you, Lauren. Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us for this webinar today. I'm very excited. I'm going to pop back to the topic slide. Today we're talking about keep clients coming back, easy retention strategies that work. Uh, and like Lauren said, um, I've been helping health and wellness professionals market and manage their small businesses for about 15 years now. I started teaching here in massage schools in Colorado and now teach workshops for practitioners all across the country. And I really resonate with the business topics because I'm a massage therapist, but before I came to massage therapy, I have degrees in marketing, advertising, and public relations. So it's just a really natural fit for me to blend those two worlds together and uh, not only just help massage therapists, but now I have the ability to help all health and wellness professionals um, by working here and having the opportunity to work with ASCP. So uh, I've loved doing that, and again, I'm so grateful for you to be here today. This is what I love to do, uh, so hopefully I'll be able to help you uh, do what you love to do, get some tips on how to keep clients coming back and build those businesses. So I've got a ton of great content, content so let's go ahead and jump in. So. When we think about marketing your business, really you're thinking about two different types of marketing. We have what I call hello marketing, where you're trying to pull new clients into your business. But then there's also the welcome back marketing, where you're bringing existing clients back in for follow-up and additional appointments and services and treatments. I think a lot of times people focus on the hello marketing, thinking they have to constantly be working so hard to get new clients in the door that they forget to put time and energy into welcome back or client retention marketing. Um, and it just sort of falls by the wayside. So today we're going to talk all about why that's important to put some focus there, uh, but also tips that you can do and introduce to your practice and business that are not tough. They just take a little bit of time and effort and you'll see great results. But before we jump into client retention content, just a reminder, if you do want some extra info and tips and tools for the hello new client marketing, uh, be sure to pop into ASCPSkincare.com. They have an amazing education library full of webinars on all sorts of different topics. One of them is my old uh, webinar, Yes, You Can Market Your Business, Essential Marketing Skills Made Easy. So know that that's there for you if you want more information and content about bringing new clients in. But today we're talking about client retention. How do we keep those existing clients happy and coming back? Before I assume everyone knows exactly what we're talking about, let's, let's look at some uh, definitions. So client retention basically is the ability of a business to keep its clients coming back over time. Why is that important? Well, it's important because satisfied retained clients tend to spend more meaning they come in for additional and different services and treatments, they're buying products, they're spending more than a new client would, they cost less to keep them coming back. So it costs a lot less to have an existing client come back for an appointment than to constantly be marketing and putting effort into getting new clients all the time. And they have the, more of a potential to make valuable referrals, work, sort of what we call word of mouth marketing, to potential new clients. 
So it's absolutely imperative that you do give your existing clients that attention uh, that they need in uh, community building and marketing and keeping them happy and coming back. So here's a question for you. What do you think? Client retention, is it a naturally occurring phenomenon? Uh, and go ahead and shout your answer out. <laughs> so most of you are probably saying yes. Some might be saying no. Uh, hopefully you're saying maybe. And the answer really is uh, it can be, but it's not always. Are we absolutely excited and thankful and grateful when clients come back on their own? Yes, absolutely. And we need to be, make sure we're saying thank you to those clients. And we'll talk about that a little bit later in the webinar. But it is not always a naturally occurring phenomena. We have to remember that our clients are human beings too. And we get busy, we've got a lot to do, and things fall by the wayside. One of the things that might fall by the wayside is making an appointment to come back with you. So we need to put some, again, time, effort, and attention into making sure that they know why it's important to come back. Core requirements before any client is going to come back to you, you need to make sure you are giving excellent excellent quality in your treatment and services, fantastic customer service, and you're doing all of that at a fair price. Those are the cornerstones or the core requirements. If you're not doing that, they're not coming back. Beyond that, what are some of the reasons that clients don't come back? First is that they may not see or understand the value of the service. They may not know wow, what am I really getting from that facial? Is it important? Is it worth the time and money? They may need some convincing. They may need some education. They may need some reminders. And so again, that's what we're going to talk about in today's webinar. How are we going to break out the information? We're going to break it out into two different sections. First section are the things that you can do during the treatment, during the service, as you're interacting with them. How can you be building and working towards getting that client retention, getting that client to come back? Second half, what can you do beyond the treatment? Once they leave your office space, how can you keep working with them and keep marketing to them to keep them coming back? And throughout the webinar, we're going to be talking about different strategies. And these strategies are going to fall into three categories. First category are strategies that build community. Next, strategies that reward behavior. And then third, strategies that incentivize. And all of those things, if you're doing them all and keeping it all going, they will increase your retention rate, increase the rate at which your clients come back for future appointments. And ideally, that's what we want, right? OK, so here we go. We're going to start with section one, during the treatment. What can you do during the treatment to set it all up? And we're going to break this first half into three different subtopics. First is create value, product sales, and ask. So let's look at the first section, create value. So when we think about creating value and overcoming the barriers, remember we just said some of the reasons they don't come back is they don't understand why it's important, why it's worth the time and the money with everything else they have going on. Why is it worth it for me to go back for another appointment? What did I get from that? And the key thing here is we can never assume that your clients understand the value. You know absolutely what all of your services do, how it helps them, how it builds confidence, how it actually helps skin, how it actually helps fix problems, all of those things. It just makes seems to be so easy for you. Like, of course they get that, right? No, we can never assume. So we have to constantly be communicating the value. And here are some ways you can do that. Start by revisiting the past. So if a client comes back to you for an appointment, of course you're going to focus on what they need today. But before you do that, start by revisiting the past. Remember, we want to keep building this value and reminding them of the value. So that's why you're taking good client notes, right? So you can go back to your client files and check to see what were they there for last, what were the reasons they came in for that service, what were they really looking to get out of it. And check in with them and say, hey, you know, after your, the facial you came in for last time, were your needs met? How did your skin feel? Did this uh, you know, problem that you were having clear up? Did you notice a difference? How long did those you know, benefits and results last for you? Again, don't think that they're going to have that in their mind. They've got a million other things in their mind. It's your job to, to remind them. 
and then get personal with them about what it is that they're looking for today. What brings them in? What do they need? What are the benefits of the work, right? So remember, you always want to be creating that value and reminding them of the value. So one thing here uh, in this, these, for, with these first two bullets, one of the things I go in for regularly uh, is eyelash tinting. And when I go in and I see my esthetician, she you know, is really good about saying, well, how long did the results last for you last time? So I'm like, oh, about four weeks. And all she would need to do as the follow-up to that to get me hooked even more would be to say, wow, wasn't it you know, great that you didn't have to wear mascara? Because that's the reason I go in for eyelash tinting, because I wear hard contacts and I don't want that mascara flaking in my eyes. And if she had asked me, she would know that. And if she knew that, she could use that as a reminder to me of the value of that service for me personally. And maybe there are reasons other people go in for eyelash tinting. And so you use you know, reminders for them but whatever is unique for their situation. But that's the kind of thing you want to be doing with your clients. Why are they coming in personally? And then you're going to connect those dots between what they need and the benefits of what you offer. So you're constantly reminding them that you and your services are meeting their needs. Okay? Excellent. So next thing in this section, remember, as a reminder, never assume, right? Never assume uh, that they will can be able to connect those dots on their own. Next thing in this section, product sales. So one of the great aspects of client retention is that if a client starts purchasing product from you, there's a greater chance that they will remain a client of yours because they get really excited, they really love the product, and that's a reason for them to keep coming back. What we tend to find happens, though, sometimes is that Maybe they stay consistent with their product purchases, but maybe they're starting to do that online, or they're calling in an order, or you know, they're doing other ways to get that product through you, which is still great, we still try it, but they're not coming in physically for a service or treatment as often. So when you think about that scenario, remember we're trying to get them back physically in the office also. We want to say thanks for the product sales and purchase, but I really want to you know, still be giving you services and treatments and um, all the other things that come with coming in the office in person, maybe you think about offering an in-person purchase incentive, right? So that if they purchase their product while they're there for a service or treatment, they get a little something for it. And we're going to talk about incentives in a little bit, but maybe it's that they get a sample of something else or, you know, whatever it is that you might want to give to give them a reason to come in for a treatment and purchase their product with you then in person. So start thinking about that a little bit too. What are some creative ways that you can work with your product sales and tying them into uh, treatments and services? And the last piece in this section is making sure you're asking them to come back. Remember, in order for them to come back, they have to at some point make an appointment, <laughs> right? It's the logistics. And sometimes that's easier than others, isn't it? Sometimes it's a no-brainer, and sometimes it seems to take forever to get someone around to making an appointment. Of course, the easiest way to do it is in the moment, rebooking right now, after they've received their service or treatment. They are loving it. They're in your environment. They're relaxed. They've had a wonderful experience with you. So you have to ask for it. And oftentimes we say, assume. And you're going to come up with whatever language works for you and you're comfortable with, but we want to assume that they're coming back. Hey, when would you like to come back for a follow-up? Okay? And then see if you can get that scheduled right then in the moment. This is a great time to really think about what their needs and wants are. And now that you've had time to analyze their skin or whatever it is, what type of service you're doing, you are much more in the know about what other treatments might benefit them. So is there an additional service? that would really help them with their needs? Is there an upgrade? Do they need to upgrade to a microdermabrasion treatment or whatever it might be, right? So think about offering them an additional service that would help them, okay? And if they aren't able to book in that moment, make sure that you are the one that's in charge of the next step. Not just like, oh, you know, you want to book something? No, no, that's, oh, I'll do it later. Okay, see ya. <laughs> right? And off they go into the, you know, out your door and who knows where. So we want to make sure that you're in charge of the next step. So if they're not able to book in that moment, 
ask them, how about I follow up with a call, text, or email? Which do you prefer? I'll let you know what we've got to open appointments. How many weeks from now would you like me to send you some openings? You know, four minutes from now. Okay, so think about how can you gently and easily just be in charge of the next step. Because you know that as soon as they walk out your door, their to-do list of how many, 50, 60, 70 items, is already starting to swim through their head and they're on to the next thing. And they may just forget to get around to making that follow-up appointment with you. It happens. We do that too. Think of, think of put yourself in their shoes. How many appointments have you been meaning to make that you have, whoops, it slipped through the cracks, you've forgotten it, right? It happens. So our job is to make it as easy for, as possible for them to make that next appointment and to remind them to do it. And when we talk about making it easy, absolutely important and essential almost now these days to incorporate online scheduling. That is just the way that people like to work. We like to pop online at any time when it's convenient and get these things done quickly. We don't want to be paying phone tag or text messaging tag back and forth uh, to try to figure out what might work. We want to make it easy, easy, easy. Remove those barriers, right? All right, perfect. So those are all of the things that you can do during the treatment. Remember, you're just overcoming obstacles, you're connecting the dots, you're reminding them of value, you're making it easy for them to come back. So those things have to be happening. Now, we also want to talk about what happens and what we can do beyond the treatment. So once they leave your room, how can we keep in contact with them? How can we keep marketing and keep in touch so that they are reminded that it's important to come back? Remember, we're still overcoming those barriers. So in this beyond the treatment section, we're going to break it up into two subcategories. First, communication strategies. And second, marketing strategies. So when we think about communication strategies, that is the type of strategy that builds community. Right? We're trying to make them feel and make it true that they're part of your family, right? For your, your practice, your business family, that you're included, that you care about them as a client, um, that you're, they're not just a number to you, that you, you really do care about them and have a vested interest in their health and wellness. Okay? So you're building community with them. You want them to feel like they're part of your practice, your business, so that they're more likely to come back. If they feel alienated by you, they're not going to want to you know, come back for that anytime soon. But if they feel like there's a warm welcome waiting and you truly care about them and are, have a vested interest in who they are as a person and what their needs are, they're much more likely to come back. Okay? So we want to make sure that we are communicating with them between sessions, between appointments. So what I like to do is call it stay in touch. You're out of sight. They're physically not with you anymore but you're not out of their mind, okay? So it's a way to keep in touch and communicate in between appointments. So some of the things you can do are really sort of an easy one. It's treatment follow-up. So say they're in with you for a service and then they leave. Well, it's so easy for you to touch base with them, check in with them about their home care, home care reminders. Check on the results. How do you feel after that peel? What are your, you know, do you have a reaction? Do you feel okay? Any questions that you have about how you should be feeling or how you can do home care, right? Let's talk about your treatment plan based on how that's going for you. Let's do this next, right? Hey, do you need to follow up with a product order? Be happy to help you? And sometimes it's as simple as just saying thank you. Hey, thanks so much for coming in the other day. I really enjoyed seeing you. Uh, and I hope that you enjoyed your treatment. I'd love to see you back again soon. Okay? So easy, easy, easy. These are treatment follow-up. It's sort of logistics. It's a no-brainer in a sense. Okay? Beyond that, beyond the specific treatment follow-up, there are a lot of different strategies that you can use to communicate with clients and stay in touch between treatments and sessions. First is your email marketing. Right? So email marketing should be happening fairly consistently. Some, it's up to you. You have to find the balance and the sweet spot that works for you. Oftentimes people send an, a general client email out once a month. Some send every two weeks. So again, you have to find what works for you to be able to do it consistently and what your clients are open and willing to receive, how often. 
But in there you can have information about new treatments that you're offering, any specials that you might be running, informative articles about one of the treatments that you do or something that's happening in the skincare world, reminder of open appointments, oh, here's a link to my online scheduling, all those sorts of things. It's like an e-newsletter that you're just staying in touch, you're keeping them up to date. Same goes for all of the social media platforms you may use. Uh, that it's just a way to keep in touch, again, out of sight but not out of mind. They're reminded of who you are and what your business has to offer. And a little side note about social media, you do not have to be on every single social media platform. Ideally, you want to be on the platform that your clients use because otherwise it doesn't make sense to be putting all this time and effort into something that your clients aren't using. So uh, ask them. Ask them what social media platform they use the most, and then focus on working on your content there. Next, postcards and mailings. I know it feels so old school at this time, uh, but sometimes now that we are getting so overloaded in our e-communications, people now are starting to resonate again with getting something in the mail, just a little reminder. Uh, this is, hey, here's a new special I'm running. Hey, I've got open appointments. I'm introducing online scheduling. Go check it out, whatever it might be. Okay. And then what you want to try to do is have a variety of methods because, again, you've got a variety of clients and they all will respond to different forms of communication. So you want to be trying different things so that you are able to connect with different people on different platforms. And, of course, it all comes down to how do your clients want to communicate and that's how you should communicate best with them. So do your best to, to figure that out. Ask them. Trial and error. Always check to see, you know, if you're using an email marketing program, you can go in and see how many people actually opened the email, how many clicked on a link within it, and you can get a sense of what's working and what's not. All right. So communication strategies, check. We're on now to marketing strategies. So here are the marketing strategies that you can employ beyond treatment, so in between sessions. Let's talk about some general topics before we get into the specifics. So when we think of marketing, I think that oftentimes people, people hear the word marketing and they just start groaning. <laughs> like It's like a, a Pavlovian response. They can't help it. They're like, oh, marketing, I don't want to. I don't want to, right? There's a resistance. And I think because people have this sort of built up idea of what marketing is, plain and simple, marketing is just promoting or selling a product or service, period. And how you do that is completely up to you. There's no rule, there's no, doesn't mean advertising, it doesn't mean this, it doesn't mean that. It's your choice, however you choose to promote your service or product, okay? So it's not evil, I promise, it doesn't have to be. Uh, it really can be whatever you want it to be and whatever you make it. So in this section coming up, we're going to be talking about these specific types of marketing strategies. Birthdays and holidays, frequent visit rewards, Referral appreciation, quick return offers, package plans, membership, it's been a while, and of course more. Always more, 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 more. Okay, so again, let's cover some general topics before we get into the specifics of these types of strategies. First, do I always feel like I have to reinvent the wheel? Do I have to completely come up with something unique and that no one's ever seen or done before? Absolutely not. If you can, great, that's fun, do it. But you don't have to. So if you're out there in the world, and this is a great now opportunity to start looking at what other businesses are doing. They don't have to be other, you know, skincare service business. They could be any kind of business. If you see something that a business is doing in any type of marketing, but of course right now we're talking about client retention strategies, it's absolutely okay to copy that and make it your own. And say, wow, I really love how this one business is um, using this strategy. I'm going to take that concept and make it more personal, make it apply to me and my business and my practice, and I'm going to start using that. Let yourself be inspired. You know, these big businesses out there pay marketing teams a lot of money to come up with their strategies, their client and customer retention strategies. Take advantage of that, <laughs> you know. Let yourself be inspired and influenced by them and just take the general concept and personalize it and make it work for you and your business. All right, next topic, incentives and rewards. So in this next 
kind of section here, we're going to be talking about strategies to try to keep your clients coming back and overcome those barriers of, I don't see the value, I don't think I, it's worth my time and money. We're going to try to overcome all those things. And sometimes we're going to be talking about incentives and rewards to try to help make that happen and influence behavior. Well, oftentimes people get caught up thinking that incentive equals money or incentive equals discount. And the reality is that doesn't have to be the case. Okay, we're going to look at some different options you have in this sort of category of incentives and rewards. You may choose to offer discounts. It's absolutely one of your options. And I've known practitioners who have never offered a discount in 20 plus years in business, and that has worked incredibly well for them. But I also know practitioners who offer discounts somewhat regularly, and that absolutely works for them. So personal, your choice, whatever works for you. Discounts are one of your options. You also have add-ons as an option, right? So it could be that instead of offering a discount on a service, you just offer a little something in addition to the service at no extra charge. So maybe you offer a paraffin wax, right? Or any other sort of aromatherapy, whatever else you might have. Look at your menu of services and see what you have that you may want to you know, throw in there as an incentive or, or reward. The nice part about this is if you start using these add-ons as an incentive or reward, people get excited about it. They experience it. They understand then how wonderful a paraffin wax can be in addition to their treatment, and they may start purchasing that. You're introducing something new to them that if they enjoy it, they may start buying it. Okay, So that's a plus. And another thing you have to work with are your upgrades. So maybe they come in, um, maybe you're offering an upgrade as an incentive or reward that, you know, hey, go ahead and upgrade from a regular facial to a deluxe facial at no additional charge. Again, look at your services, see what you have to work with, and think about, you know, what you might want to start playing with and offering as incentive and rewards. The great thing is all of these things can be used in any different way. And if, again, Make it personal to you. If you also do product sales, you can use product. You can use all sorts of things. Again, make it work for you. Okay. When we think about this, successful incentives, they work for two different parties. They work for you and your business, right? You want to think about, before you start putting all these plans together, what are your goals? Are your goals to just get more clients in the door? Are your goals to promote a certain service that might be new or maybe isn't selling as well or people just don't know about? Maybe you start using that as an incentive or reward. Is your uh, goal to keep your bottom line the same but increase client activity? So maybe you're not offering discounts, but you're offering other things as an incentive instead. What you never want to do is get in the situation where you start to become resentful of any incentive or reward that you're offering and you start to get annoyed if people take advantage of it because that's obviously not working for you. Okay, So really think about what are my goals with putting these strategies together and choosing my incentives and think about what would work for you, what helps you meet your business goals. Incentives also have to work for your clients, right? Because if you put together this great strategy that you think is amazing, but your clients aren't motivated by whatever it is that you're offering, they're not going to take advantage of it. They're not going to use it. It's not going to work for them. So you want to make sure that it's something that works for you and your business, but also something that motivates your clients and changes their behavior, gets them to act how you want them to act. Okay? And we're going to be talking about a lot of different uh, ideas and strategies in this upcoming section. And oftentimes people start to get overwhelmed and think they have to do everything at once. But really, when you think about it, who's in control of setting up the marketing for your business? Who makes the decisions about what you're doing and how you're doing it? Great thing is it's you. You do. So I encourage you to have an open mind, listen to all these concepts that are coming up, and then pick and choose and start to make a really smart choices for you and your business about what works for you, what does, doesn't. Like, mm, I think I'm going to try this, but that one I don't think is the best bet for me and not a great fit. Or I'm going to try this strategy, but I'm going to twist it and change it in these ways so that it actually works for my clients and my business. And that's what this is all about. I'm just going to throw out a bunch of ideas, and you pick and choose what works for you. Okay? 
That's what makes it fun. I know you may not be thinking fun right now, but trust me, get on the fun wagon. It actually can be really fun when you start thinking about getting creative and inspiring your clients and getting things going that they'll be excited about, and that will ultimately help your business. Increase your client retention, how often they're coming back, increase their treatment frequency, get people to try new services. It actually is, can be pretty amazing, and it's not that hard to do. That's what gets me so excited. Okay, so now let's get back into some specific strategies. Here are the strategies we're going to look at, and we're just going to take them one by one. Okay, so this first type of strategy that we're going to look at is a type of strategy that builds community. And it's birthdays and holidays, recognizing these two things. And this is what I call, I, I put it into the no-brainer category, right? This is just an amazing opportunity to have a contact, or what we call in marketing, a touch with your clients. Every year, birthdays roll around, right? So it's pretty, pretty easy to you know, have an opportunity to connect with a client on a personal level and wish them happy birthday, okay? What you want to make sure you're doing is you want to plan and you want to have a plan. So you really want to think this through. And no, I'm sorry, but winging it, not a plan. <laughs> Oftentimes I hear people say that, like, well, I just kind of wing it, whatever. I'm like, hmm, I might, you know, su you know suggest against that. I'm not going to endorse that. Uh, because I think that everything works a little bit better when it comes to this when you have structure. Right? It's a lot easier for you, a lot less stressful uh, than always thinking like, oh shoot, am I forgetting something or what's happening or what am I doing for this? Oh, I don't remember. Right? So just plan what you want to do and then have a plan. Write it down. Know what you're doing. Okay? So for birthdays, obviously to recognize the birthday, you have to be tracking them. So make sure that you're, you, know, you have some sort of client file management system, whether you're using software program that actually does all that out for you, or you're actually you know, still using Excel spreadsheets and keeping it all tracked that way, whatever works for you. Um, pros and cons to all. But the key thing is you want to be sure that you're tracking that information. Okay? And whatever it is that you do, again, some people may choose just to have a communication with the client and say, happy birthday. They might just send a card or a text message or a phone call uh, and do nothing more than that. Others might take it as an opportunity to say, hey, happy birthday. Next time you come in, let's upgrade your facial to a deluxe facial at no additional charge as my way to say happy birthday and I appreciate you. Others might have a discount. Others might have a product sample, whatever it might be. You know, So it's really up to you. The key is you want to have take advantage of the opportunity to build that community with them and also that you want to be consistent. You don't want to have a birthday recognition one year and then, oops, I forgot the next year, and then your client's like, what, is that a thing? Is it not a thing? Is that person running their business? or Are they asleep at the wheel? What's happening? Right? So get a plan together and then just follow it through. And then holidays, uh, this is an opportunity to have fun. I mean, you can always recognize the, you know, the traditional holidays if you want, um, but you can also make up your own. Uh, so for me, I recognize one traditional holiday, and that's New Year's. Okay? So I always give them something at the New Year because it's a, a chance for them to uh, recognize that this is a fresh new start. Uh, here's a, another opportunity to increase your health and wellness. Like, Let's bring in the New Year together. Uh, so it's just a great way for me to do that. Um, but you can also just do whatever you'd like. Like I'm celebrating 15 years in practice. So this year I uh, created a special little logo for my 15th anniversary, and I'm giving all of my clients gifts uh, just to thank them for being an amazing client and letting me do what I love to do. It's my way to give back to them and, again, build that community and say, hey, you're part of my, my family here. You're part of my therapeutic family, and I appreciate you. Okay. But you know, all you have to do is go online and see that there's a holiday or two or three for every day of the year. Uh, you can pick some fun ones to celebrate, uh, or you can create your own. You know, whatever it might be, just have you know, use it as an opportunity to have fun and kind of step outside your box. Again, build that community. Let your clients know you're thinking of them and that they're part of this bigger, bigger sort of wellness family. Okay. All right. So the next types of strategies that we're going to look at are they fall into the category of rewarding behavior. So we want to make sure that when clients start doing what we want them to, we're saying thank you and we're rewarding, incentivizing that behavior so they keep doing it, right? So the first thing that falls into this category are frequent visit rewards. 
So what do we want our clients to do? We want them to come back often and consistently and try different services and do different things. And we want them to be an active client with us. So we want to reward them when they do what we want them to do. So the traditional way to do that is reward based on the number of visits. So it could be after every five of a certain service, they get something. Whatever, again, fill in the blank with your incentive here. Uh, every 10, whatever it is, it's, again, totally up to you. Okay? So this is the traditional way to do a frequent visit reward. Key is to find your balance. If you're saying like every 20 visits, they're never going to hang in there for that. That's not going to be in motivating, is it? So you want to have the re visit reward frequent enough that it's motivating, but not so often enough uh, that it feels like a giveaway, a throwaway. You want to have it hard enough that it, to attain that it feels like a true reward. So again, finding that sweet spot for you and your business. So that's the traditional way, but let's think outside the box. Maybe there is, you know, you could do something with the types of visits. Are there certain services that you want to promote that aren't selling as well or, again, aren't as well known? Think about how you can incorporate this. this remember, these are your strategies. You do whatever you want. So one thing you might want to do is have sort of a mixed up frequent visit. So you could say, I have this plan where if you come in during a certain period of time, you state the time period, and in that time period you hear, are, see me for three facials, three waxes, and three tints, then there's a reward. So it's like three plus three plus three equals free, or equals upgrade, or equals product sample, whatever it is. Okay? Again, it's up to you. You do whatever you want. Have fun. This is your strategy. Think about, again, what are the goals for your business? What behavior do you want to encourage and incentivize? And then create your plan that matches that. You could even have sort of like a bingo card, right, with all your services on it. And uh, they can play with that. And if they receive a variety of services that, you know, create the line, then they win something. Like, do whatever is fun for you. You want these things not only to be exciting and fun for your clients, but for you. You, you want to have, you know, experiences. You don't want to be dreading enforcing your strategies. You want to you know, have fun playing with your strategies, communicating about your strategies, and getting people to participate in it. So it should be interesting for everyone involved, you included. Okay, that's frequent visit rewards. Next, we want to talk about word of mouth referral appreciation. So we all know that one of the things we absolutely love and want is our clients telling other people about us and our businesses and our practices. And we want them referring their friends, families, colleagues, right? So we want to encourage that behavior and then reward that behavior and say thank you when they do that. So let's take a few little look at a few little tips in this section. So first of all, we want to make sure we're asking for it. Again, it can happen on its own, and it's amazing when it happens on its own and people are referring without you asking, but we don't want to rely on that as a strategy. A, oh, I hope so, strategy, right? We want to ask them, hey, I'm building my business. I don't know if you know about that, but I um, have room for new clients, and I'd love for you to tell your friends and family about what I have to offer um, so I can help them in the way that I help you. Okay, so ask. It's okay to ask. And then if you are asking, make it easy for them to help you. So don't leave it up to them to create like a spiel about you and your business. Give them tools to use. So give them an actual physical business card or postcard for them to hand on to people. Or send them an email that all they have to do is forward it to their friends. Or post something on social media that all they have to do is share. Right? And that way you're controlling the message and you're making it easy for them to help you. And when you do get a referral, Make sure you're saying thank you, and make sure that you're saying thank you quickly, <laughs> right? Um, I used to have a policy where it's like every, you know, three, four, or five referrals, you get something. And people were like, ah, I don't, that's not motivating to me. Uh, I want instant gratification, right? That's our world now, instant gratification. So think about rewarding them after every uh, new client that they refer to you. And also think about giving, getting creative and making sure that you are saying thank you with the gift they actually want. So maybe you give them three choices. Say, thank you so much for referring, you know, Lauren to my practice. Uh, I'm so thankful that you took the time to tell others about um, what I have to offer. As a thank you, please choose from these three options. Okay? And that way it, it feels like it's personal. They get to pick something that they really want and they're not like, 
Oh, there's this thing you guys are not really interested in. Oh, well, I'm not motivated to really refer anyone else, right? If you're giving a gift they don't really want, they're not going to be motivated to get that gift again. So think about how you can be creative that way. And as a reminder, we are here, ASCP, uh, but I wanted to make sure you know our referral program, our thank you reward for referring someone either to ASCP or our other three member associations for massage therapists, nail professionals, and hair professionals, is that you then receive $20 off your membership on your next membership renewal for every new member that you refer to any of the associations. So side note, I wanted to make sure you knew about that. All right, let's move on. This next category of strategies are categories that incentivize behavior. Okay, so there you want to motivate someone to take an action by giving them an incentive. So what do we mean? We're going to look at some specifics. Quick review. Remember, you've got a lot of options when you're thinking about what you're using as an incentive, but making sure that those incentives you choose work for you and your clients. All right, here's a question. How long do promotions have to last? Like, oh, I'm, I'm going to you know, start using this new strategy or promotion to get people in and get people back. How long do I have to do that? Is it like till the end of time? Like, do I have to start a promotion and then I never can stop it? Well, you might choose to for some of the ones we've already talked about, like birthdays, frequent visits, referral, thank you. You may want to do those ongoing. Keep them going, never end. But for others, maybe the ones coming up in this next section, it's absolutely okay to have an end date. But you want to make sure that it's a clearly stated end date. You can't just be offering this promotion and then say, oh, I think I'm just going to stop that. You, know, you need to give your clients a heads up. You need to let them know this promotion lasts until. Uh, and sometimes that's actually motivating. So if there is an end date, sometimes you'll get this push toward the end of this, the promotion where people are taking advantage of it uh, and getting it before it goes away, sort of that limited supply you know, mentality. So it's okay to put an end date. You might want to most of the time for these upcoming ones, but make sure that it's clearly communicated. Okay, first type of strategy in this section are quick return offers. So this is when your very specific goal here these are offers to motivate clients to return for another appointment in a short period of time. Okay, So shorter than they normally would. So say if they come in monthly for a facial. This is us trying to get them in even sooner than that for something else, Okay, for another appointment. And you've got some options here. Let's look at things. So first thing you want to do is choose your time frame, like what's your time, one week, two weeks, three weeks, a month. And then choose the service that you want to promote through this offer. It could be any service, like, hey, come back for any service in the next two weeks. Or you might want to very pick a specific service that you're promoting, um, again, based on maybe you're trying to get more people to know about it or try it, or it's a new service that you're offering. So one of these offers might look something like this. Hey, come back for, and then whatever you choose, any service, a different service, a specific service, in the next two weeks, and you'll receive, and then whatever you've chosen to use as your incentive here. Uh, so you're trying to get, again, people to try new things maybe or come back more quickly uh, than they normally would. It's a quick return offer. And the thing with these is they're so easy to change it up. You could have a short little time frame that you're doing them in so that you can constantly be changing it. You may only do that during your slow season. You might want to constantly be rotating out your services so people are trying new and different things. You might swap out your incentives. You can constantly be changing these because you can make them short-term offers and only use them when you need to, okay? So again, sky's the limit here. You can be as creative as you want. You can try whatever it is that you want, put a short end date on it, and then if it's not working, you just stop it and try something else, okay? But these are fun things that you can play with. Next in the section are package plans. And what that means is a client receives an incentive, whatever that is that you've chosen to use as your incentive, for purchasing multiple treatments in advance or at the same time. So traditionally, again, people think of package plans when they're purchasing them in advance. So purchase five facial treatments and you receive either a discount or purchase five and you receive this extra bonus or whatever it might be. So that's the traditional way to think about it. But you can also think about maybe it's a multi-service pack, right? So again, back to that idea of 333. 
And maybe they purchase this multi-service pack, then they receive this incentive or reward. Or it could be even like same day. So maybe you put together a package where it's a spa day. Or, hey, if you see me for two to three services, uh, or these three specific services, you can make it as detailed as you like, on the same day, you receive this incentive or reward. So again, it's your information and your strategy to play with. Make it whatever works for you and your specific group of clients. You create the packages, so do whatever you want. Tip is, if you're getting a lot of money up front, so if it's the traditional where they're paying advance, in advance for multiple services or treatments, uh, tip is to save that money and then sort of quote unquote pay yourself um, when the treatment is given. Oftentimes what happens, especially if you have a lot of clients purchasing packages, then people put that money right into their account, they spend it, and then when the weeks come where people are redeeming their third, fourth, and fifth treatment in the package, you're not getting income on those weeks. That sort of throws everything off um, when you've got bills to pay, um, but you don't have that income coming in necessarily. So just a little tip there. Okay, and then get creative. Again, this is your stuff. You can do whatever you want. I think it would be great to give an extra little bonus. Maybe if someone purchases a package plan, then in addition to that package plan, they get a gift certificate or a gift card that they can give to a friend that the friend can then come and redeem with you. How great. You know, the client's going to feel like a hero being able to give their, their friend a free treatment or a free 20 bucks or a free whatever it is um, to use with you. They're going to love doing that. And then you get introduced to a potential new client. So again, these are just ways you can get creative and start thinking about how you can overlap and intermingle all these different things. Again, coming back to what are your goals for your business? What do you want to promote? How can I make that happen? What tools do I have to use? How can I make that happen? Okay, so something that we've just started to see individual and sole practitioners doing in the last few years is introducing their own version of a membership program, right? A lot of the big companies are doing membership programs and um, they're really popular and they work for them. Again, take anything you see out there and adapt it to make it work for you. So what that means is typically, and again, you can make it whatever you want, but typically a client will pay a fee to receive special privileges and rates. So usually what that means is they're paying an annual fee to receive a monthly deal. So for example, they pay $60 annual fee to receive a monthly treatment, again, whatever treatment it is that they've purchased or that they've enrolled for, at $10 below the regular rate. Okay, so that's the sort of traditional setup. And just because it's not something you've done before doesn't mean it's not something you can't start doing, right? And why does this work? Why would you want to do it? Well, it encourages regular and consistent appointments. And isn't that the whole goal of what we want our clients to do? We want to reward the behavior and incentivize the behavior that we want. And we want our clients to be coming on a regular and consistent basis. It forms and starts to create that habit and then they want more, and they see the value, they see the long-term value. It increases loyalty. Obviously, if they're part of your program, they're not going to go to someone else for the same service, right? And, of course, it increases potential for word-of-mouth marketing. If I'm going to see Lauren for services on a regular basis, I'm much more likely to be telling my friends, oh, I'm going to see Lauren today for this service. It's so amazing. You should try it, right? And it builds community. Again, however you language your description and talk about this program, it's your special club, it's your community, it's your VIPs, and they feel like they belong, they feel like they're part of something. And again, of course, as I've been saying for every single piece and strategy, make it your own. We're talking about the traditional one here, but you can adapt it and change it and make it whatever you'd like it to be. Okay, next in this section, it's been a while strategies. So maybe you've got those clients that you saw a couple times and then they've seemed to have fallen off the face of the earth. You haven't seen them in a long time, haven't heard from them, and you really would love for them to come back and keep them coming. Uh, so why is it? When you think about, well, why hasn't they been back, right? It could be maybe they no longer want or need the service, of course, sure. But it also could be maybe they just need a reminder to book. What we find when we were talking about communication strategies earlier with that email 
marketing where you're sending out an email to all of your clients, sort of that newsletter, e-newsletter, is that sometimes will prompt so many appointments because people are like, oh shoot, right, yeah, I've been meaning to book with Laura and I just forgot. Let me do that right now. So maybe they just need a reminder. Maybe they need a reminder of the benefits. Again, overcoming those barriers. I don't see the value and I don't know if it's worth my time and money. They need a reminder by why, yes, it's absolutely worth your time and money. Let me tell you why. And maybe they actually need an incentive to try again. We're human beings. There's a whole psychology of marketing to humans. And sometimes people need an incentive to give it a try. Okay, that's what all these strategies are about. So when we start thinking about specifically, it's been a while strategies, here's what we want to think about. Just like with all the others, you want to plan and have a plan because, again, consistency is important here. And you also don't want to be scrambling all the time or wondering, like, oh, what am I doing if it's been 45 days? Wait, shoot, what am I, you know, you want to have it all set up. Make it easy for yourself. And then you want to know exactly what's going to happen at how many days. So, for example, at 45 days, say they came in to see me and it's been 45 days since their last appointment and they haven't, there's nothing coming up on the schedule. They haven't booked. So maybe, again, this is all up to you, number of days and what you're doing, change it all up. But maybe at 45 days you send an email specifically to them saying, hey, it's been a while, here are my upcoming openings, I'd love to see you. At 60 days, maybe you send a text or a mailing, just checking in. At 90 days, send an email with a specific offer with an incentive to come back. Okay, again, totally up to you. Just some examples. You want to have it all clearly laid out like that. And then you want to be able to track your client appointments so that you know, oh, how many days has it been since their last appointment. If you're using a client management software, they'll help you do that. It makes it easy, easy, easy. But even if you're using your own client management system, you can still set it up where you can track that information. And then, as I said, consistency leads to the best results. So if you're consistent in following your plan, you'll see the most return on that. If you're just like, every, oh, shoot, I haven't done that in a while. I guess I'll, maybe I'll do one this month. Nah, nah, I'll do it next time. Like Then people are falling through the cracks. Set up your plan and then consistently follow through. All right, and then there's always more, right? Like you can't just leave a section like this <laughs> without more because this is just the tip of the iceberg. There are so many different things you can do. And hopefully just hearing these things has started your own creative juices flowing and thinking about like, oh, yeah, I really want to promote this service. And this would be a, a fun way to do it. I think people would really resonate with it. That's what you want to start doing is thinking about your own ways to do these things. You want to make it personal. You want to get creative. You want to have fun with it. But you do want to have a balance, right? You don't need to be doing an incentive and an offer for everything. You also want to be making money and having your bottom line, you know, stay true. You want to balance in the type of strategies that you're doing uh, and how often you're carrying them out and um, introducing one at a time, whatever it is for you. Evaluate that. What works best for you? And then as you're implementing these strategies, continually evaluate them to decide what's working, what's not. What's motivating people? What do people not care about? What's happening? What's not happening? And then based on that, feel free and feel empowered to change your strategies and try something else. Okay? That was a lot of fun stuff. Look at all that fun stuff we covered. Okay. So that actually concludes our marketing strategies piece, which means that includes our beyond the treatment piece. So we've covered during the treatment and beyond the treatment. And you might think, oh, that's it. But no, we have a math bonus. <laughs> so one thing I want to make sure we talk about is um, all this time we've been talking about, oh, clients are coming back and your retention rate and da da da. Well, we want to make sure you understand how you can start calculating your retention rate. So here's the question. In your chat box, please just type a quick yes or no. Do you currently calculate your client retention rate? Yes or no, and then Lauren will pop in and give me a general feel for if the yeses or nos are winning? Honestly, it's um, kind of split, but nope, now we're seeing lots of nos. So, no. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. Thank you, Lauren. All right, right? That's what I thought. Like, it's one of those things that unless you are on a mission to really track it and get involved in it, it's probably one of the last things you think about calculating. But it's so important, and we're going to talk about it. So. Number one, why would you want to calculate your client retention rate? Well, specifically, if you're going to take the inform from information from this webinar and start applying it to your business, 
you want to be able to have a starting point. So you can then evaluate like, oh, are these strategies helping and increasing the rate at which my clients are coming back? Or does it have no effect or is it what, you know, you want to be able to sort of evaluate. So you need to have a starting point. But it's also incredibly important um, as you're evaluating your business. You want to set goals for the percentage of your existing clients that continue to come back to you. And if you're not reaching that percentage goal, then you want to be able to implement new strategies to raise that percentage. Again, the percentage of existing clients that come back for additional treatments. It's so important to know that so you know what you're dealing with. And I'm going to look at some figures soon, so hang in there. And then how, that's what we're going to talk about now. So how do you calculate? Remember, our goal here is to determine what percentage of clients came back. So to, to do that, we're going to have to come up with a few things. First, we're going to have to choose a time period to study. So you could just choose, it's July, so you could choose June. How did it, how is, what was my client retention last month? How did I do? It could be the, the quarter, so it could be the first quarter or second quarter of the year. It could be the whole year. It could be whatever you want, you know, but you have to choose a specific time period to study. You're going to be able, have to be able to calculate the total clients that came to you in that specific time period. And of that list of total clients, you're going to have to be able to determine how many were existing before the time period it started and how many are new clients that came to you during the time period. And again, this is where your client management and file management comes in, whether you're using a system or a software program. Um, software programs will make it a lot easier, but you can still do this even if you're using Excel or your own type of spreadsheet. Okay? And then ultimately, we're going to calculate the percentage of all existing clients at the start of the time period that came back for a treatment during the designated time period. And I don't know about you, but I'm a visual learner, <laughs> so let's look at what this looks like in a much more visual way. I'm going to walk you through a few examples. So here we go. First, you want to start with the number of all existing clients at the beginning of the time period. So you have to have that figure. And then, remember, you're going to take your time period and you're going to break down your clients during the time period. How many total clients did you see? Of those, how many were existing? How many were new? And once you have all those figures, you will be able to calculate the percentage of existing clients that came in for a treatment during the time period. Let's look at this example with some specific numbers. So if at the beginning of our time period we were starting our practice, maybe we're just building our practice, we have 80 clients at the beginning of this time period, say we talked about the month of June. So during our time period, we saw a total of 100 clients, and of those 100 clients, 40 of them were existing, and 60 of them were new. They came to us brand new during the time period. So if we were to calculate this percentage of existing clients, that came back to us during the time period, we take 40 and we divide by 80. So what do we get? 50. So half of our existing clients came back for an appointment during this time period. 50% retention rate. Well, I guess we can be grateful that 50% came back, but wow, look at those numbers of the breakdown for the time period. To get 100 clients, that's a lot of work to get 60 new clients during every time period, isn't it? I want more than half of my clients to be coming back. I've worked so hard to get those clients. I don't want to keep working to get new clients upon new clients about new clients. So let's look at the math in a slightly different way. Say we're starting that same time period with 80 existing clients. What if we were to do all these client retention strategies and we're bumping up our client retention rate from 50% to 75%? Then our breakdown would look like this. Of our 100 clients that came to see us, 60 of them would be existing and 40 would be new. All right, well, I'd, sounds better to me, right? I'd like to only have to get 40 new clients than 60 to keep going. And the great thing is that when we're looking at this example, that 80 number, the 80 existing clients, we're constantly growing that existing client list, aren't we? 
So month to month, as we're getting new clients, we're constantly growing. So that's not going to stay at 80. That's going to grow. So let's see what that means. So if even I'm keeping consistent at that 75% client retention rate, which ideally you want that to be higher in the 80s. Depends on what services you do in your area, like a lot of variables. But let's just stay with that 75%. If I were to look at this example, but now it's a couple months later and my client list has grown, so now I'm starting the time period that I'm studying with 120 clients, and I'm 75% of them are going to come back to me. I've got this 75% retention rate going. That means to get 100 clients, 90 of them are existing, and I only need to work to get 10 new ones during that time period. That's what we like to see, right? I'd much rather have my clients coming back that I've already worked so hard to get than constantly be getting, working on getting new clients. And remember, those clients that are coming back are spending more money, are referring their friends, are trying new services, plus, plus, plus. Now, if you have any specific questions about this, my contact information is going to come up in just a few slides. Feel free to get in touch with me. I'd love to set up a phone call. We can talk about it. We can go over it. Um, but hopefully, that breakdown made sense to you, and you can start working from the same uh, percentages for your own practice. Okay, so there we go. Keep clients coming back. Easy retention strategies that work. We covered during the treatment, beyond the treatment. We had a math bonus. Uh, so hopefully, my sincere hope is that you're able to take the information from today, have fun with it, make it your own, and implement some of these strategies to help build your business, to help clients come back so you can keep going and meeting your goals for the business that you've set out for yourself. So thank you again for joining me. And if you have any questions, if we have time, I know I covered like an hour of content, so we maybe only have a short amount of time for Q&A. Um, but Lauren, if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Yeah, a um, couple questions about time management. Um, being solo practitioners, um, as you know, it can be hard to find the time to do all of these great ideas. Um, do you have any advice for people to help manage their time better or carve out um, time out of their day to do this? Yeah, that's actually a great question, and thank you for those of you who asked for bringing it up. Um, this is what I always suggest to every practitioner I talk to in all of my workshops, um, is that you actually set aside time on your schedule every single week, just like you would schedule an appointment with a client, uh, to market and manage your practice. Even better if you can do that on a consistent day and time. So maybe for you, it's every Wednesday from 9 to 10. That's your marketing time. And you block it out on your calendar. You know that that's, you can't do anything else during that time. It's not flexible. You are at your office doing that work during that time. Uh, and that, that way it becomes a habit. It becomes something that you do. And it puts that time aside on your schedule. That's a great idea. That's what I find works best for people. Yeah. No kidding. That's a no-brainer. I didn't even think about that. What a great idea. Um, let's see. A couple more questions. Um, what do you think about, um, you know, we talked about um, products being purchased and, um, you know, creating packages around that. But if our clients are buying stuff online, like on Amazon and that sort of thing, um, do you have any advice for them on how to combat that? Yeah, I think that's where um, you may want to, it's tough because of course, you know, technology makes a lot of things great, but it also makes a lot of things challenging for us as business owners. Right. Um, so right, they do have choices where they can go online and purchase. Um, that's why I think trying, and it can't hurt to try it, you know, can you overcome Amazon? I think you can, uh, by offering in-person person tips. Right? So offering them, why do they go to Amazon? Let's put it like in, client psychology. Well, I go to Amazon because it's easy. I can do it quickly. Maybe I've already paid for shipping and done, done, done. Easy peasy. Okay? So we want to make it just as easy for them to purchase from us. Plus, we want to give them a little something extra to do it. So maybe that's where you have that incentive where, hey, if you come and you actually get it from me, whether you get it from me online or you get it from me in person, I'll throw in X, Y, Z. Here's an incentive. Maybe you throw in an upgrade on their next session or something you've been really trying to promote anyway, you give it to them as a free bonus. You know, think about what would work for your clients. 
and try to overcome um, what makes Amazon so easy for them. Try to match and then one up Amazon if you can. It's tricky. It's tricky. That's great. Yeah, it is tricky. And um, one thing too that um, kind of can steer them is um, explaining as well that you know you're ordering stuff from Amazon where you don't know where it's coming from, whether it has fallen off a truck or if it is an, in an Amazon warehouse or a third party. So you don't know what's coming in um, the bottle, whether it's the actual product, if it's counterfeit, etc. cetera. Um, and you can offer your clients the guarantee of knowing that I ordered this right from the manufacturer. It was direct and you're getting the freshest product possible because I maintain my inventory correctly or, you know, and stuff like that. So, um, it's all about the spin as well. Yeah. Well, and that's huge. That's also client education because they may not know that there are counterfeit product out there or that's even a possibility. So it's helping them understand, like, hey, you know, these things happen. It's safe with me, right? Yep. Exactly. Cool. Um, question about a membership. If a client signs up for a membership, um, you know, like the example you used, would you allow them to be eligible for other incentives and specials as well? Or do you um, think you should limit that in some way? Yeah, that's a great question too. And that's totally up to you. Um, it depends maybe what the incentives are. And you can always clearly state that in your descriptions of your other promotions and strategies. So you may just have a blanket statement like, hey, if you're a member, that's all you get. But then members start, may start to think like, oh, is this membership worth it? Maybe I'd rather do the other stuff. Um, so you may pick and choose. So you may, as you're introducing other strategies and promotions, say clearly under you know the small writing underneath, you know, uh, this strategy or promotion is open to all clients or this strategy uh, is not available for members of my VIP program or whatever it might be. So you can pick and choose uh, whatever you feel works best so you're not feeling like you're giving away too much but that you also don't start to have your members feel like they're not getting access to other things and, may, and start to question whether the membership is worth it or not. So that's sort of a balance that you'll have to play with and make your own decisions around. But just making sure that you clearly state who's eligible for the promotion as you're introducing and marketing it. Got it. Good advice. Thank you. Um, Kristen, thank you so much for your time today and um, lending your expertise to all of these members, lots of positive feedback. Um, how can they get a hold of you if they have any specific questions that they didn't get answered? Yeah, so my contact information is up on screen. So feel free to give me a call, send an email. Um, what I usually recommend is that people email me and then we set up a specific date and time for a call so that we can both be sure that we set aside that time and can sit down um, and really focus on our conversation. and. Um, talk some things through. So I'd love to hear from you. Please feel free to reach out. There's my contact info and uh, like I said, I'm excited for you to try some of these things in your practice and let me know how I can help you if I can. That is so nice of you to extend your expertise like that and um, to offer the phone call to chat about some things that she suggested. Um, most industry leaders would take um, money from you to do that, but you only need to be an ASCP member to have that luxury of contacting Kristen if you have questions um, on your business, um, running it in the processes and stuff. So like she said, hit her up with an email if you'd like to chat and um, you know, maybe you guys can schedule a time to chat. So thanks again, Kristen. This was another awesome webinar and I'm glad to have this to add to our archives. Oh, thanks for having me. Good luck, everyone. Take care. All right. So I'm going